So in this next section, we're going to talk about how regularities in the environment really help our perceptual system. And so our perceptual system is really smart. And not only does it help us to perceive, but at the same time, it's also picking up regularities that occur in our environment, things that we can expect to occur in our environment. And it stores or saves that information to help make perception an easier process in the future. And so a lot of what we'll be talking about here really kind of highlights the importance of top-down processing or top-down knowledge that helps to guide our perception and make basically the perceptual process a lot simpler for us. And one of the things that we can count on is that there are certain things that even though we don't think about it on a regular basis, we can expect from the environment. So for example, when it comes to light, right? Light usually comes from above because of the sun, because we tend to light most of our homes and stuff like that with light that's on the roof or the ceiling, and it comes down from us. And so one of the things that we can typically expect is any time that we go to an environment, light's going to be coming from above as opposed to below, right? Now that sounds silly and it sounds simple, but that can actually help us whenever we're making some perceptual judgments, especially about something that it's really difficult to perceive. Similarly, Plants tend to grow from the ground up. There are some cases where you can grow plants upside down, but by and large, usually our experiences with plants are that they're going to be growing A, in the ground, and B, they're going to be growing up from the ground. Similarly, if you go into a professor's office, you have an idea of what you can expect in a professor's office. In fact, I could have you list out what are some of the you know top 20 items that you would expect to see in a professor's office. And similarly, if you go to a baseball game, you know what to expect on the baseball field, right? It's not uncommon to have bats or gloves on the baseball field. But if you were to see a uh, chicken um, or if you were to see um, a coffee maker on a baseball field, it would throw you off, right? Because these aren't things that we regularly see. And so the perception, perceptual system is really good at picking up in these regularities in our environment. Now one example of this is something that's called the oblique effect. And basically, in our world, objects tend to either be horizontal or vertical. And because of that, our perceptual system is picked up on it and it is a lot better at perceiving or recognizing objects when they are horizontal or vertical compared to when there's an angle to them. And so oblique is just basically another term uh, for angle. Okay, so I, I don't know exactly the study that I pulled this graph from. It was primarily just to kind of highlight the point. But let's say in this experiment that basically they were having people make judgments about a line. Okay, and so here we have their thresholds. And just to remind people, lower thresholds just mean better performance. But what we see here is a typical thing anytime that the oblique effect is looked at where thresholds or people's ability to uh, accurately um, judge differences in line length are going to be better for horizontal or vertical lines as opposed to lines that have a little bit of an angle. Okay, so this idea is called the oblique effect, and the oblique effect is basically any time that you see an object that's horizontal or vertical, you're going to be able to, I guess, better perceive that object than if the same object were presented at an angle. Um, to some extent, we have this experience whenever we're looking at pictures too, especially on people's phones when they rotate, but it's a lot easier to see the picture if it's exactly in a horizontal or a vertical or a portrait or landscape um, position than if that picture is in an angle. In fact, if we have a picture in an angle, you know, have that awkward moment where somebody grabs your phone and readjusts it so that it's either horizontal or vertical form. And this is a, a kind of everyday example of the oblique effect, where it's easier for us to see the picture and to process that information that's contained in that picture when it's either in a horizontal or a vertical uh, as opposed to being a, at an angle. Now, <clears throat> whenever we talk about this top-down knowledge, we can not really talk about top-down knowledge without talking about the idea of a schema. And you probably come across this term in a range of different classes. This is a really big idea in um, social psychology. Also, it comes up a lot in introductory psychology. And basically, a schema is kind of just a shortcut. Or you can think of it as like a script that allows you to know how a particular scene should be or should go. So one of the ways that we typically talk about it whenever we're talking about social psychology is there are scripts for things like going into a coffee shop, right? So if you go into a coffee shop, typically what you do 
do is you walk up to the counter, you order your coffee. After you order your coffee, you slide down and you wait for them to give you your coffee, give you your coffee, and then you take it and go to the seat, right? And so it's like a script of this is how I appropriately behave in this particular environment or this particular situation. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that if somebody violates that script, people get upset really, really quickly. So a prime example of this, and I see it happen all the time at the, at the coffee shop that I go to on a regular basis, but people go and try to order at the area where you pick up your coffee. And for the staff and the other people in the uh, coffee shop at the moment, it's a really awkward situation. In fact, a lot of times, even customers will say, no, no, this isn't where you order. You need to go over here. Okay, so this is an idea of a schema. Similarly, there are schemas for whenever we go into a restaurant. You know, we typically wait for somebody to seat us, and then we expect there to be menus. Uh, they come and fill our water, give us a little bit of time, and uh, wait to order food. Okay, now, if you're in a um, situation where one of those schemas gets violated, it's just a little shocking to you. So we were really kind of deeply embedded within these uh, different um, schemas. Now, one of the ways that schemas can work uh, for perception uh, actually comes from a nice study. And so this is only one of the examples from the study. But basically what the researchers did is they pre presented participants just with scenes, and they used eye tracking, and they just tracked how long they looked at different objects in the scenes. Now, one of the things that you'll notice in this particular kitchen scene that they used is they have a stove, and they have an object on the stove. And that stove's either a pan or it's going to be a printer. Now, I don't know about most of you, but at least most of the time in my house. Sometimes there's weird objects placed in weird places. But most of the time, we do not expect there to be a printer in the kitchen, especially on top of somebody's stove. Now, what the researchers found is that actually, just looking at gay's duration, so the first time they just glance over the picture really quickly, that the amount of time that they looked at the um, pot that was on the stove, or what you would expect based on a normal um, kitchen schema, is that they, they barely looked at it. So here, they looked at it around 400 milliseconds, right? So roughly half a second, um, and, and didn't make a big deal about it. However, whenever the participant was presented with the um, printer on the stove situation, they actually stared at it a longer time, almost double the amount of time, 800 milliseconds, so a little under uh, one second. And um, this was commonly seen across the different schemas that any time a schema was violated and not only grabbed that person's attention, but they would tend to look at it uh, for longer compared to um, a object in the scene that was schema um, appropriate. So this idea of obliques uh, or the oblique effect, but then also semantic regularities are nice examples of top-down knowledge and help how it helps to guide our perception. The other thing is that especially with schemas, Applying these schemas allows us to save a lot of cognitive energy and allows us to do things quicker, right? If we know what we can expect, then it allows our perceptual system to work easier and faster. And so schemas are really important to helping to make, the, uh, to make perception a lot easier for us. So that's what I wanted to um, talk to, to everybody about, about how um, regularities in the environment help to guide our perception. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me.